Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have dx over dy equals cosine of x plus y. And we're going to be solving for y. At least we're going to try, right? So this is kind of like an interesting differential equation because we are given dx over dy, which is the derivative of x with respect to y. Now, normally in most differential equations, we're given dy over dx, but don't worry about it. It's very easy to get dy over dx from here. What is dy? It's an infinitesimal, a very, very small thing, right? And dx is the same. So any change in x over any change in y. But that change is very, very small, which we call an infinitesimal. Anyways, let's go ahead and do the following. Flip both sides, so we can kind of write this as dy over dx. And the reciprocal of cosine, even though I can use secant, I just want to write it as 1 over cosine. Same idea, you can also use secant if you want. Alrighty? So, now I got something more normal. Now we're going to use an awesome method. Have you heard of that before? It's called substitution. Yes. We're going to call this something. How about Z? You could also use U, T, whatever variable you can. Now from here we get something interesting because by naming that Z, we got the following equation. Z equals X plus Y. So since y is a function of x, by the way, x is also, x could be a function of y as well, but I'm going to go off of x, so let's just say y is a function of x, and x is of course a function of x, so their sum is also a function of x. In other words, we can talk about dz over dx, which for simplicity, simplicity's sake, I'm going to call y prime, I mean z prime, okay? So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. We get z prime equals the derivative of x is 1 with respect to x, of course. I know this notation is not very clear. I think, is this called Leibniz notation? Whatever. I mean, it's obviously more clear, but the derivative of y is y prime, which we can also call dy over dx. So this is y prime. So from here, I get y prime equals 1 over cosine of z. Isn't that super simple? Yes. Now, we got this equation, and I got y prime equals 1 over cosine of z, right? What am I going to do with that? We're going to replace z prime with something like this, but I don't have z prime in my equation. I have y prime. So let's isolate y prime, and I can write it as z prime minus 1. So we're going to do two subs. One of them is this, and the other one is this. We already did that, so we have y prime equals 1 over cosine z, and y prime is going to be z prime minus 1, and that's going to equal 1 over cosine of z. Awesome. Now, what are we going to do next? We're going to go ahead and isolate z prime, and then this is going to become a separable differential equation, okay? Let's go ahead and write it as z prime equals 1 over cosine of z plus 1. And then we can make a common denominator, write it as 1 plus cosine of z divided by cosine of z. And then that's equal to z prime. Great. What can I do with this? Well, we can write z prime as dz over dx. Remember that notation? So this is going to become dz over dx. And then that becomes 1 plus cosine z over cosine z. And then we can basically divide both sides by this or multiply by the reciprocal and put the dx on the right-hand side. So we get something like cosine of z divided by 1 plus cosine of z dz equals dx. Guess what the next step is going to be? That's one of the easiest, hopefully, integrating both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and integrate this function. How do you integrate cosine z divided by 1 plus cosine z? You know, there's a couple different ways to go about it. We could probably multiply by the reciprocal. Let's give it a try. Do you think multiplying by 1 minus cosine z is going to help? When you do, you're going to get a 1 minus cosine squared z, which is sine squared. And then you're going to get something like cosine z times 1 minus cosine z divided by sine squared. Now, here's the thing. I could probably use substitution. The problem, though, if I name sine z, let's say u, 
then cosine z dz would be du, but then I'm going to have a cosine squared, which could be problematic. So instead, let's do something else. We could actually use what is called, I think, wire stress substitution, right? Is that what it is? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to call z tangent. Um, I think I would probably use a little different variable here. T equals tangent z over 2. All right, great. So by making that substitution, I, I'm basically assuming the following. z over 2 is arc tangent t, and z is 2 times arc tangent t. And then from here, I can basically get dz. I don't have z in the equation, so don't worry, don't worry about it, but I do need dz. dz is going to be 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. The derivative of r tangent is 1 over 1 plus t squared, right? So that's dz, and I need to find cosine z. How do you find cosine z? Notice that I can use a double angle here. Tangent z over 2 gives me tangent z as 2t over 1 minus t squared, because it's 2 times tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent squared. So that's what it is. And obviously, by using this relationship, I can draw a right triangle. And that gives me z here, 2t, 1 minus 2t, or not 2t. I have to say that, sorry. And a hypotenuse from Pythagorean theorem becomes 1 plus t squared. So I do need two things, cosine z and 1 plus cosine z. So from here, cosine z is just going to be 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Awesome. I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use this. Okay? Let's plug it in and see what happens. So cosine z is just going to be 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared divided by 1 plus cosine z. That's going to be 1 plus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Then I'm going to multiply it by dz, right? That's my expression. And dz is just going to be 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. 1 plus t squared appears a lot. That's okay. And let's go ahead and integrate. And eventually, we're going to uh, set this equal to x plus c because we have uh, the integral of dx on the right-hand side. Makes sense? But let's simplify this first. This is pretty complicated. And I can immediately say that, okay, 1 plus t squared is going to somehow, somehow cancel out. When I make a common denominator, I'm going to have this. The denominators are going to cancel out after making the common denominator. So the denominator at the bottom is just going to be kind of like a weird thing. 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared. And of course, that needs to be multiplied by 2 over 1 plus t squared. And I have dt, and that's my integral. Let's go ahead and simplify this more. Uh, t squared cancels out. 1 plus 1 is equal to t. t, come on, it's 2. I meant 2. 2 cancels out, and we end up with something like this. 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared dt. Okay, awesome. Great. What can I do at this point? So here's what I could probably do. I could kind of separate this into two integrals. So I'm going to split it up this way. Since I have the 1 plus t squared or t squared plus 1, I'm going to write it as follows. Negative t squared plus 1 over t squared plus 1. And then what I like to do with this is negative t squared minus 1 plus 2. So I split up the 1 into two pieces. So that, and why did I pick minus 1 plus 2? Because notice that this is the opposite of t squared plus 1. In other words, it's divisible by that. Makes sense? So a little bit of uh, long division there. That gives me negative t squared minus 1 over t squared plus 1 plus 2 over t squared plus 1. The whole thing is dt'd and integrated. Awesome. Very good. Now, notice that this is the opposite of t squared plus 1, right? So I can kind of split it up that way. And now, here's the fun part. t squared plus 1 cancels out, and we end up with negative 1, which is very easy to integrate. So it's going to be negative 1 plus this. Let's just integrate without further ado. The integral of negative 1 here is just going to be negative t. And the integral of this is going to be 2 times arc tangent t. And of course, I have the x plus c on the right-hand side because remember, we were integrating dx, right? This is x plus c. Awesome. Let's go to back substitute. So I had this, and now I got my result in terms of t. So what is t, right? We have to think about it. t is tangent z over 2. Great. Let's go ahead and copy that here. t is tangent 
z over 2. Awesome. That's going to be my key. So if you plug that in, you're going to get minus tangent z over 2 plus, okay, what is the arctangent? If you arctan both sides, you're going to get z over 2, obviously. But 2z over 2, 2z or not 2z, that's just going to give me z by itself, which is nice, right? That's x plus c. Now, obviously, z is also going to be replaced with something else, right? What is z? Okay, it's always a good idea to take notes. Obviously, if you're doing this problem on a piece of paper, you would write, hopefully, somewhere what z meant, right? I, I did, but I just have to go back and forth. z is x plus y. Great. Let's go ahead and replace z with x plus y. So it's going to give me negative tangent x plus y over 2 plus x plus y equals x plus c. Uh-huh, x cancels out, awesome. And even though I can kind of isolate y, but this expression still has y in it, so it's not gonna be super nice. But here's what I can do. I can write my solution as y minus tangent of x plus y over two, and sometimes for, I don't know what it is, but it's just gonna do this. Desmos is gonna, I mean, notability is gonna act weird. Maybe it's the Apple Pencil, whatever, equals c. c c that will be the solution so this difference is always a constant and this brings us to the end of the video thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it. please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and sorry for the long video and bye bye